in our last class, uh, in our readings, in our debate, we focused on uh, two case studies, as you remember. One was uh, on the ethical and moral dimension of the doc Vatican document uh, uh, dedicated to LGBT um, communities, so particularly to homosexual couples. Mm, should the priest bless them or not? And this uh, clear non, not, uh, was uh, discussed in the in media in also many theologians uh, i forget to tell you that uh, for example in germany something like 200 uh, moral theologians express their um, criticism to this document also in america as we saw in uh, national catholic, catholic report um, uh, Articles uh, they are they were also criticism to this document. Particularly, it was in, put in relationship with very open uh, gestures and uh, words of the Pope Francis towards homosexuals and LGBT communities and uh, how to reconcile it. Uh, most of us uh, were critical. We even said that could be considered as a kind of hypocrisy uh, of the Vatican and even of the Pope Francis. But some of you underlined that we have to be more careful in uh, uh, judging this kind of documents because uh, it could be seen also as a uh, expression of uh, pluralism and uh, a part of Catholic identity which uh, should be simply accepted and tolerated as other positions. But what is important that nobody, even the church, will not uh, impose or force others to follow their uh, opinions or their doctrine. A uh, more complicated, uh, more complex case was uh, the uh, case of um, uh, Finnish uh, mother who, living in Italy, was uh, disappointed with uh, religious symbols of crosses in public schools where her sons were um, uh, educated and uh, we were analyzing uh, results of um, court uh, decisions. Uh, first, uh, National Italian Court, which reject uh, uh, this uh, idea to uh, deprive public offices, schools of uh, religious symbol after the one sentence of the uh, court uh, in Strasbourg uh, in 2009, actually was in favor of uh, the Lao Tse, and two years later, uh, the op uh, completely different decision. And this complex issue, who is right, who is wrong, was under uh, value of pluralism. So pluralism allowed us to uh, reconcile different opinion, different worldviews, and we have to avoid uh, uh, two radical solutions. So uh, I hope that after two weeks uh, of uh, reflection, of uh, readings, uh, you will be uh, also full of uh, energy and imagination and engagement and passion. You will be willing to discuss uh, in class the topic of um, uh, fundamentalism uh, project. Uh, of course, I <laughs> I don't encourage you to to read uh, all five volumes. Uh, first of all, they are not available in, in Poland as far as I know, but it's good to know that 
just in case if some of you will be willing to to deepen this uh, uh, phenomenon um, you can uh, find uh, five thick volumes dedicated exactly to to this phenomenon uh, where it was published and is available of course uh, you can buy uh, this five volumes it began in 80s so it's quite uh, old project in 1987 by two American scholars, one a theologian, a Lutheran theologian, Marty E. Marty, born in 1928. Uh, Marty is known as the uh, author of many, many books uh, uh, dedicated to religion in the U.S. And uh, his uh, younger colleague, uh, R. Scott Appleby, born in 1956, uh, who is historian, uh, who is focusing his attention on global religion and particularly its relationship to peace and conflict. Uh, and uh, also, uh, Scott uh, Appleby uh, is interested uh, in the uh, relationship between uh, sacred and violence, or religion and violence, and religion and reconciliation. So all these phenomena are connected with the uh, solution of conflicts. Uh, in any way, these five volumes were published by uh, Chicago University Press. Uh, between 1991 and 1995, and uh, they, uh, Marty, Marty was uh, Martin Marty was not, of course, the only author. Uh, or Scott Appleby, they invited uh, scholars from around the world, so they really uh, collect uh, the best uh, uh, religious. Uh, experts from different countries and what what uh, actually this five volumes uh, uh, they consist on on collections uh, or examples of fundamentalism which you can uh, see everywhere uh, in all religions uh, old most ancient as, as judaism christianity uh, or Buddhism, or Hinduism, and also in the new, new recent uh, religions. So uh, no religion is immune to this temptation to become fundamentalist. And uh, what um, I found, uh, once I, I have a chance to, to look through the, those volumes, that uh, this is a kind of invitation to, to deepen uh, this aspect of religion if you are interested in. And as an exemplification, I uh, decided to send on our platform two books, one um, by T.B. Bassam or Bassam T.B. Uh, his book is dedicated to Islam. Because I think Islam is, is the most uh, uh, particular in, in Europe or in, in Poland is seen as a religion connected with fundamentalism, with terrorism even. And so I thought it would be good to have a look and to read carefully a very important, uh, I think, distinction between um, Islam and Islamism. This is exactly what uh, 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 Basan Tibi is doing in this uh, very lucid and uh, I would say clear uh, book uh, from, 2000, uh, from 2012. Uh, one of the reasons uh, why I encourage you to read it because I uh, read several books by uh, Basan Tibi, I have also a chance to participate in two or three 
conferences in which uh, he gave lectures or was involved in in panel discussion and they found his distinction a very important and explaining also the differences between the different type of um, Muslims or of Islam. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, TB is so well regarded and uh, his books are translated in many languages, including Polish, is that in his uh, approach, he's combining his being a Muslim on the one hand, he was born in in Damascus, in Syria, in 1944, but he moved to Germany in the 60s, and he made his uh, career, so to say, you know, his academic degrees, the doctorate, habilitation, and so on, um, not only on Islam, but also on critical philosophy. Hockheimer, uh, Adorno, uh, he, his uh, masters. Uh, so he, I think, uh, combine on the one hand uh, his uh, very deep uh, knowledge of Islam as a uh, as a insider. He can tell us what is written today about Islam in Arabic and what really Muslims are writing about. But he is also warning uh, Westerns us to identified Islamism, means politicized form of Islam, with Islam as such. And I think this is uh, very important. So one of the reasons why it is worth it to study uh, religious fundamentalism is exactly to be able to, to discern or to distinguish between these two forms of religion. And I think this uh, book by um, Basam Tibi it nicely it could be uh, combined with the second book, which I uh, put on the platform and I invite you also to read, by uh, one of the co-editor of this uh, fundamentalist project, uh, R. Scott Appleby. Uh, and his book, uh, The Ambivalence of the Sacred, uh, with subtitle Religion, Violence and Reconciliation, is a very good um, illustration of how uh, religion could play a very different uh, role in different uh, contexts. So it could be a source of violence, uh, but it could be also a source of reconciliation. And uh, he g gave uh, many examples of this uh, ambiguous or ambivalent uh, character of sacred. And what uh, I found also interesting in this uh, book that um, it uh, encourage you your personal reflection on religion. So it's not only a, a good scholarly book that you can study phenomena of violence in different contexts, and you can see that all religions could have this uh, potential or temptation to to play a repressive, uh, violent uh, uh, role uh, in suppressing or eliminating even, even uh, other religions, but also it could be used as a source of uh, overcoming uh, division, tensions and conflicts. And, uh, Reading this book, please keep in mind that uh, uh, not only what uh, Scott uh, Appleby described, but also probably uh, Polish history is full of uh, examples of this ambivalent character of, uh, of religion. For example, in, in uh, post uh, Second World War period, uh, clearly uh, we can say that uh, religion, Catholicism, played a very positive way, a role in, in uh, encouraging uh, human rights, uh, 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 individuality, 
It was a force which was uh, in constant conflict with totalitarian system. Uh, but we can see uh, that since political uh, changes in uh, Poland uh, since 1989, this role could be considered as in the title of the book of, of uh, Scott Appleby as ambivalent. Uh, so I hope that we will have a nice discussion about this uh, uh, temptation of religion to become fundamentalist and also uh, resources to overcome this uh, temptation.